Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I've been getting a lot of questions on how I process my models from step one to the final step. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm actually gonna go through the prep and primer process when you're starting a new model and then getting it ready for paint. So if you're new to the channel, hopefully this is something you can pick up on to ease your tensions and, and help you along the way when you're doing your new model. And if you're a pro and you've been around for a while and you've been doing this process for quite some times, again, hopefully you'll pick up on something as well. This is just how I get my models ready for a good paint job. So let's get to the video. All right, guys, so I do have a printer running in the background. I do apologize for a little bit of the noise, but I'll explain to you what I have here. So I've got this model. This is a Punisher model from Dosis 3D, and I've actually printed it in quarter scale. So I will leave a link below in the description for Dosis 3D's uh, Patreon. The guy does some incredible models and I've already done a few of his uh, in some of my videos. But what I did right here was I've got this in different stages because I want you to see exactly what it's like here. So right here, for example, this bag, this, uh, this gun bag or whatever like that is in a raw state. This is a fresh print that I've done just a tad sanding because I wanted to show you something on here. This is in its raw state. And then right here, we also have the head and the hand here that's also in a raw state. Now this right here, the, the bottom part, uh, we've actually done a little putty in here and uh, I'll explain to you a little bit more about that. And this right here is in the pre-stage of its final sanding and final primer coat. And I'll explain to you a little bit about this. And then this part right here is actually a finished piece. And uh, we'll get into more of that as well. All right, so a few things that you're gonna need in your prep and primer process is, of course, you're gonna need some sandpaper. And I've got just a few uh, small pieces that I generally work with. The other thing is, if you're gonna do any filling, you're gonna need some type of filler. And uh, this plastic wood filler here by DAP is exceptional. I really love this stuff. And I've done a video on this before. And um, you're also gonna need something for dust. So I get like these little makeup brushes right here. This helps uh, get a lot of this dust off. So when you're doing primer and paint, you get all that stuff off of there. And then the other thing that I like to use is, I like to use this thing right here called a G tool. And I've brought this up in my video several times, um, but this is more of a polisher than a sander. And I'll show you exactly what I like to use this for. First things first on this raw piece, if you see right here, anytime you print in resin, it's just almost like FDM. You're gonna have some type of uh, print marks, like swirl marks that you see on here. And what I like to do is I like to use just a small, fine piece of sandpaper and go back in and sand those out. Of course, once you sand them out to a level, and you use a finer sandpaper, uh, let's say I'm all done, that's what I use this G tool, for, G tool for right here is, I turn this thing on and I'm basically going in and I'm smoothing all this out. And I want this smooth, so smooth, that when I put my primer on, it's just gonna look gorgeous. It's gonna look just well finished. And of course, that's what the brushes are for, is to get all that dust off of there. And, um, when I put primer on it, it's going to look uh, pretty smooth. Well, that, at least that's the goal. But anywhere you have non-textured areas and you want to get them uh, flattened out, you want to get them real smooth, then that's what I use this right here for. Yes, you can use some very fine sandpaper, but these little sanding discs on here um, just do, I mean, they're just, they just really take all that. If you rub your finger across it, you'll feel a little fine grit versus uh, rubbing it across this side here where I've used it and it's just really, really slick. So that makes it just all that much of a better finish when you uh, start applying paint. Pieces like the head that have a texture to them, um, I really try and not sand in those textured areas. I really want to just go in and apply a light coat of primer on this. That way I can see where the swirl marks there are and uh, see if there's any type of line shifting or anything like that. All right, so on pieces like this where I'm actually adding some type of filler, basically this filler, uh, it just acts like um, any other filler and it dries in no time. Like I applied this uh, probably about 30 minutes ago and it's already dry. And what I'll do is I'll just go back in with sandpaper 
and uh, I will get that back down to the desired grit and then again I'll use my G tool here and I'll go back in where sandpaper won't reach and actually start sanding that down a little bit with this polisher here and as you see I can get in some of those snug areas and flatten it out really good where I don't have any like cracks and crevices on there everything is smooth pretty good levels it out and uh, it just gets it really good uh, good and smooth for a uh, really good finish whenever I start applying my primer and for primer I do use a rattle can I like this color max right here this is the same stuff that I use for the top coat um, it just really goes on very smooth um, and it actually uh, you put it on in light coats and it dries pretty quickly so let's go ahead and we're gonna primer this leg right here and see how it turns out all right so I just applied uh, one small coat of primer on this as you can see I still got some work to do so the importance of only doing one light coat is so you can see imperfections that are like this that you probably miss from the naked eye so what I'm gonna do now is once this is dry I'm gonna go back in with this filler and then I'm gonna apply more filler to it now I also use this Tamiya putty right here because this is a finer putty and like I use this like a spot putty so any like surface scratches or anything like that that I just can't get out I'll use this right here so once I apply that on there let it dry for a little bit then I'll go back in and sand it again use the G tool for the areas to smooth it out a little more and then I'll determine whether how much more primer I need to add to it so like the other areas like that you see right here don't need as much um, because uh, obviously you're going to be putting paint on top of this and one thing that you don't want to do is especially if you have a textured area like fine textures uh, if you put uh, too heavy of a coat of primer on there then you're basically going to be drowning out your textures so what I like to do is especially for head sculpts that if you look really closely tend to have um, tend to have uh, skin textures and stuff in there I will just mist it with a uh, primer I don't add a lot of primer to that because when you go in and you start adding paint to it then you're gonna lose a lot of that texture example like this uh, this gauntlet here this glove uh, if you look and see all that fine stitching right there now if you start going in and adding just a goop of uh, primer to it and putty to it and everything then you're gonna lose all that detail and that's what you don't want to do in a, uh, a resin model like this finished piece right here I still have a little sanding to do here in the front but this thing was actually printed in three different pieces and you can't tell that because you can't see the seam line it was actually printed in piece this far and this far along the the along with a glove and uh, I actually glued them all together uh, put filler around it and sanded it so it looks like it's just one big gigantic uh, bazooka here but uh, you can get that type of finish if you take your time with it smooth it out real good primer sand a little bit see where you gotta go do your filling sand a little more then add just a little primer at a time but one thing I don't recommend you doing is is just going in and taking a can of primer and just hosing it down uh, because if you do for one when you start sanding it again your sandpaper of course is going to get gunked up and then you're going to get a shitty finish on it and uh, just by taking your time and doing it in light coats just like you do with paint then you're going to get a really nice finish to put paint on the torso here uh, as you can see I did a little bit of sanding on there I did have some layer lines that I'll have to smooth off but uh, I added a coat of primer on this in the beginning because I thought oh man this is this is going to look great I want its minimal finish but when you add that one coat on there you can actually see a lot of your imperfections once it's dry like I have some layered lines right there uh, and I'll do some small sanding on here and add another coat of primer I won't go crazy with it uh, because I want to make sure that I'm not going to lose all those details now one thing I will say that I probably should have mentioned earlier is before you really start getting into putting primer on your model it's a good idea to dry fit it and uh, make sure every all the pieces uh, fit together and you make sure that you're not going to go and put all this primer and paint on there and you're going to have a, a bunch of major issues so like my torso fits really good I probably won't have to do any 
any type of uh, filling or anything like that on there because it is a torso and it actually countersinks into the belt part. So it actually hides that. Doses did an incredible job by doing that. But the big thing is, is I wanna make sure like my pieces that are supposed to fit on here, fit on here snug without a lot of issues. Like as you can see, this bazooka fits on there pretty good. Now I'm not pressing it down or anything like that because I'm not fitting it on there permanently but uh, this does fit on there very well. And uh, for like the head, I wanna make sure that it does fit on there pretty good. I don't have a bunch of seam lines or anything like that. And then uh, if you do, it's just gonna be minimal. So on this right here, I haven't done any sanding on it. So I'll actually sand that down so it'll actually fit a little bit better in there. All right, so back up the camera a little bit. Like this piece right here, uh, it goes onto the torso. There is a flat surface here. So what I want to make sure is, I want to make sure it, it makes good contact with it and it fits right in there snug. Because when I put glue on it, I want to make sure that the glue contacts with the, uh, with the piece itself and uh, you do get a good bond. But as you can see right there, once it goes on, um, I don't have any, uh, any major hiccups or anything like that or any major gaps where this piece is going to join together. And it's always a good idea just to dry fit everything like this glove right here. It just kind of sits in like that. You don't see any major, again, I'm, I'm holding it together because I don't want to drop it, but you don't see any major gaps or anything like that. Uh, I'll probably have to do some minor sanding inside there on the outside seam right here. But uh, as you can see, it fits pretty good. So here we have the base Now it isn't fully cured or anything like that. I've actually uh, took this off of the, the UV light so I could show you here. So there are some imperfections. Um, again, like right here where it all, uh, you got your uh, support divots and right up here, I'll actually go in and that's a flat surface. So I'll actually go in with some sandpaper, sand that down really good. And uh, I'll just make sure that it's good and smooth whenever I start to apply paint. Um, this model was printed in one piece on the, uh, the Anycubic M3 Max, and it is heavy. Um, as you can see, uh, there was this was already done. Uh, Dosis 3D uh, actually did all the holes and the hollowing out and everything. But this piece probably weighs a good two or three pounds. So it was very, very hard to... Uh, I actually had several failed prints because this piece was so heavy it just broke away from the supports. So what I will do uh, next is I will go in and I'll look at other areas like as you can see, like this right here uh, was uh, didn't print out perfect. Uh, you got a little bit of a split here and there on some of these shells. But do I really want to reprint this thing because of those little small imperfections? No. So I'll show you what I'll do is I'll actually go in and uh, like, for example, I'll probably cut this off right here or sand that down, making it almost like a half shell or just take it all out together. That way uh, you won't see that. And then this right here, this probably didn't, this didn't print out um, as well. What I'll do is I'll go in and I'll probably cut that off and uh, just make it like a, a little bit different from the other shells. I like different. Same thing with this piece up here. Uh, this split off a little bit. I could probably just sand that off or actually just fill off. And I could just sand that down a little bit, add a little putty to it and bam, there you go. But the rest of it looks pretty good. I got one little imperfection over here that I'll have to fill, probably take that off right there. Um, but I'll probably have to fill or sand that down and I can add um, just a support um, piece right there on that to make it like the handle like this. So there's little things that you, I would have, that you have to do in order to get it right. So one thing that I use for like any kind of sculpting, like I said on the bullet shells here on the bullet casings, um, I'll use this right here. This is Avex Epoxy and uh, you can get this on Amazon and I do have an affiliate link for it so you click on the bottom here uh, and get it from Amazon I do get a little kickback off of it same thing for the G tool I also have an affiliate link for that as well little things like this will show up like a sore thumb whenever you uh, put primer on it and then you start to put paint on it so it's always a good idea just go ahead and lightly sand that stuff and get it out of there and uh, that's before you uh, add any more primer to it. And like these areas right here that look like they're a little rough, they're not too rough. Use your G tool 
and just go over this stuff and just smooth it out really good. All right, now once you have your part finished and you're about ready to add uh, primer to it or even paint, it's always a good idea to take a makeup brush like this, one of these soft brushes, and uh, get all this stuff off. Get all your dust off, that way it doesn't show up in your primer or your paint. Now, I go a little bit of extra. I do have a stiffer brush where I can go into these. You can hear how stiff that is. But I'll make sure I'll go into these cracks and crevices first off to make sure I don't have any dust or any types of support remnants or anything like that. And uh, make sure I get all this stuff out. All right, so I added another coat of primer onto this torso here, and as you can see, it's pretty daggum smooth. I have a couple little small blemishes, but uh, I can work those out. I actually touched right there, so again, make sure you don't touch your model. Um, the reason you want to do this, on, especially on a model like this, is because the Punisher's main costume is all black. Uh, now, that can be uh, easy to paint and difficult at the same time. When you have a black paint job, uh, any little blemish is going to stick out like a sore thumb. So that's why it's important to get everything as smooth as possible and get all the rough parts out. Because whenever you start adding paint onto this, uh, it's going to look horrible. If you start having dust up underneath it, you start having types of uh, things that stick out or whatever. Some, uh, something got trapped up underneath, you've got a really rough spot. Then you're going to have issues with it and it's just not going to look good so that way like things like this that are supposed to be there like the folds into the suit and like the uh, the anatomy the ripples into the the muscles and everything like that that stuff that's supposed to be there will stick out but in a good way and you just want to make sure that uh, everything is uh, looking good whenever you start to put paint on here your paint goes on so much easier all right, so to answer a couple of questions that I get a lot also is, what is the difference in the color of primer? And uh, why do you use gray primer? Well, for me, gray primer actually points out a lot of the details that you might have missed. It's easier for me to see the flaws and the things that I need to go back in and sand uh, and primer again. Uh, that way I'm not putting on too much primer at a time. I wanna put on as few coats of paint and primer as possible because any type of texture that you have in a model, especially when you paint it in quarter scale, uh, you want to see those details. And if you start adding 16 layers of paint, you're just going to lose all that detail and it's just going to look flushed. Because again, you're going to add paint on top of that. You're going to add a top coat on top of it. You're going to be doing dry brushing and everything. And all that stuff that you do, uh, take it into account that you're going to be adding layers of paint onto it. And again, you could possibly take away from some of that texture. So another thing that people ask me is, how long do you leave primer on before you actually add paint? Well, that's a matter of opinion, but I leave primer on there for a minimum of 24 hours to let it cure. Uh, that way before I add any kind of paint to it whatsoever. Now what happens is, if you add paint on it too quickly, then what's gonna happen is that paint's gonna go over the primer that's not fully cured yet. And then you're gonna put a top coat on top of that and then what's gonna happen is the paint underneath it is gonna to start to bubble. I've seen that happen before, and then your paint cures, and then it just it leaves like cracks, and your paint starts to flake. So again, it's always a good idea just to make sure that your primer is fully cured, fully dry, before you add the first lick of paint to it. Now, of course, the end result is six months down the road, a year down the road, you still want your piece to be looking really good, just like this. You don't want any flaws to pop up, any leaching resin or anything like that. It's always a good idea to make sure that, you know, your, your print is cured properly. Make sure that you don't have any resin pockets on the inside of your model whatsoever. Uh, and six months down the road, three months down the road, two years down the road, your model still looks just as good as it did as the day you painted it. All right, everybody, I hope you got something out of that. If you did, make sure to hit that like button for me and also consider subscribing to the channel. And I do want to give a big shout out to my patrons. If you're looking to join a patron and help support the channel, go that extra mile. I do have a link for that in the description below. We'd love to have you over there on our Discord. So if this is something you could use in the future, any other tips or anything like that, leave us a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see in an upcoming video. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll go ahead and we'll uh, do that for you. And until the next video, everybody, stay safe out there. Don't forget, 
get out there and create something. Print, prep, paint, repeat, and we'll see you.